Excellent. Okay, so I want to continue our lecture, our conversation inside of Unit 2 with the collections framework and generics. And we're going to kind of piecemeal learn generics until we really want to start building our own things with generics. Uh, so with today's uh, lecture, I want to focus in on, in particular, linked list. We've previously looked at array lists, and we've talked a lot about the list interface, the collection interface, the, inter the iterator interface, and the list iterator interface. So I want to give you an alternate concrete class from array list. And so that's what we'll focus on today, linked list, and how is it different from array lists? So a quick overview. Um, so we'll talk about an introduction and then give in the hierarchy diagram of the linked list class. And then how do we declare things of linked list? We'll look at the constructor. We'll go ahead and talk about features of the linked list class and how does insertion and deletion work? We'll look at the methods that linked list has. We'll look at the DEC methods. So the linked list DEC methods. And then we'll do an uh, analysis of what, what is the best cases to use a linked list versus an array list, and what are the worst cases when to use a linked list versus a array list in our Java applications. Okay, so with that said, giving you a quick overview of what we'll be discussing, let's go into the introduction here. Shrink this. Okay, perfect. Okay, so linked lists in Java is a linear data structure. And so when you think of a linear data structure, you can think of a one dimensional structure where it essentially just goes uh, um, across one dimension, as opposed to like tabular data, which would be like a two dimensional data structure. Uh, so Anyway, a linear da data structure that uses a doubly linked list internally to store group of elements. We're gonna look at what it means to be a doubly linked versus a singly linked, and actually just identify what it means to be linked. But uh, a doubly linked list consists of a group of nodes that together represent a sequence in the list. It stores the group of elements in the sequence of nodes. So if you want like a, a physical analogy as to what a linear data structure along the lines of a list would look like is think of a train. So the train, you have the head of the train, which is the engine. You have the tail of the train, which is the caboose. You have any number of cars that are connected between the train engine and the caboose. And if you want to get to any particular car, you'd enter from the engine and then you would go through each car uh, in sequence. And so the cars are linked to the other cars, which all make up the train as a whole. So very much in the same way that trains are kind of interconnected, that's how linked lists are. So each node contains three fields. So you can think of each train car in the analogy. It has the cargo or the data. So the things actually being contained inside of that particular node. And then it has a reference to the node in front of it and a reference to the node behind it. So you could think of a linked list as a, uh, a multitude of instantiated nodes that all cross-reference each other. And by all cross-reference, actually any one node only has a reference to two other nodes, but then they're sequenced together so that you can start at the head and traverse your way all the way to the tail. And so the left and right fields uh, re references are pointers to the previous and next nodes in the list. A pointer indicates the address of the next node, the address in memory uh, of, the, uh, of the next node and the previous node. And then elements in the linked list are called nodes. So since the previous field of the first node and the next field of the last node do not point to anything, we set those with null value, so no reference. So we know that if there's no reference at a previous field or a next field, then we know we're either at the head or the tail, depending on whether it's the next or previous, that's null. Now, if, if both of them are null, then it's not referencing that, then nothing, if nothing is referencing a node, then the garbage collector for Java comes in and sweeps it away, it gets rid of it. 
so that we don't have any uh, memory leaks. So Java takes care of all the memory allocation issues with building complex data structures like linked lists. So uh, linked lists in Java is a very convenient way to store elements. When we store a new element in the linked list, a new node is automatically created. So it's so the thing is, the size of the linked list will grow. It can grow. It's dynamic, just like a array list is with the addition of every uh, element that we add to it. The initial capacity of an empty linked list is zero, and when we remove an element it shrinks so its size will decrease or increase based off of whether we're inserting or removing elements so adding elements into the linked list and removing elements from the linked list are done quickly and take the same amount of time we call that constant time in terms of computer science measures and you'll learn more about uh time uh measures of time and evaluating the optimization of how long it takes for code to execute in the next class and data structures Anyway, so it's especially useful in situations where elements are inserted or removed from the middle of a list. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, at the tail end of this particular uh, uh, set of slides. So in the linked list, the elements are not stored in the consecutive memory location. That's how array lists work. That's how arrays in general work. An element, often called a node, can be located anywhere in the free space of memory that our application is running, and it just connects to each other with the left and right sides of the node portion. So again, a node will have two instance variables of type node of its own type that will reference other nodes inside of the linked list. So let's see if we can't move to a diagram to see if we can't get a visualization of what I'm trying to explain here. So here is a linear doubly linked list. It's doubly linked because we each node references the node that came before it and the node that comes after it. And so you can think of the job of each node is to hold some form of data, right? But it, besides holding some data, it is also um, responsible for handling the logic of the container class. And so each node has a reference to the node in front and it reference the node uh, behind it. Now, in a singly linked list, you wouldn't have double references. In a single, singly linked list, each node would only have a reference to the node behind it. Uh, but it's better to use doubly linked list because it allows you to go in a bi-directional way where you can go forwards or backwards. In a singly linked list, you can only go in a forward direction. Okay, and so at the head, on the first node, or what we'll call the head node, the previous node will be listed as null, and that's an indicator to us that, hey, that's the beginning of this linked list. The very last node will have a next node of null because there's nothing behind it. And so that'll let us know when we hit null that that's the last node in the linked list. And then all the nodes in between will reference the node that came before it and the node that comes after it. And so as we go and search for things in the node, we can see, is this our thing? If not, we can get the reference to the next node that we wanna go evaluate. And then we go look at the contents. Is that the value we want? If not, we go to the next node and so on all the way until we get to a null value and like, oh, well, our value isn't there or we found our value and then we return it. Okay. So, the advantage of the formatting a data container in this way as, uh, as a series of objects that reference each other, uh, it avoids the rearrangement of elements that are required by ArrayList. Like we said, with ArrayList, getting elements from it is very quick. It's O of one, it's constant time. So it, no matter how big the array is, it takes the same amount of time to get an element out. So you, you, you can get it by index and you're like, get, get me L index number one or get me index number 50 or get me index 100,000, right? It, it would take the same amount of time to accomplish that. Uh, but if I wanted to remove an element, let's say element 50 in a array that is a thousand elements large, that could take a longer amount of time because then it has to shift all those elements up. 
everything that was, so the thing that wasn't 50, you remove it. So what's 51 now has to become 50. And then what was at 52 becomes 51 and what becomes 53 becomes 52. And that propagates down all the way down like a, uh, like a set of Christmas lights. Whereas with a uh, link list, we can avoid that because the only kind of dependency you have when you're rearranging elements is the reference of the node behind it and before it. And that's, 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 so instead of having a big contiguous block of memory, it's just these like references that each particular instance has. Anyway, so link list is often a better choice for that reason if you want to either add or remove from intermediate, from random locations within the list. So we're not talking about just adding at the beginning or the end, but you might have to insert anywhere across the list. Uh, so the right, the right side of the node contains the address of the next element. The left side of the node contains the address of the previous element. I believe we mentioned that already. So a quick hierarchy diagram of a linked list class. Uh, so linked list implements the list interface. It also implements the deck interface, which means that we can use a link list as either a stack or a queue or some mutant hybrid breed of the two. And it also implements, yeah, and queue. So we have a deck, we have a queue interface that uh, link list interfaces. It, it also extends the abstract sequential list, which is the abstract class that it's, it's built off of. It implements marker interfaces. Remember, a marker interface is an interface that has no methods, but the entire goal of um, uh, implementing those is that linked list can then be a member of serializable and clonable, which allows you to do things like um, uh, save the contents of a link list to a file, right? That's what serialization is. And clonable would allow you to be able to clone the object into a new reference. Uh, uh, but it does not implement random access, right? So array, uh, array list implemented random access, and that's what gives you that really fast access for getting items. Well, because of the very nature of linked list, we can't implement that. And so our get, the time it takes for us to get an element, will be slower than that of array, uh, of array list. And just for visualization here of this hierarchy diagram of linked lists, it would look like this. So this is our linked list. This is our concrete class. The actual class we're extending, because remember Java is a single inheritance language, would be abstract sequential list, which itself would ex uh, extend the abstract list, which itself would extend the abstract collection, which uh, implements the interface of collection. Um, or and which will extend uh, iterable. And so here it uh, implements stack, it implements serializable, it implements uh, clonable, it uh, implements list, which uh, implements collection. So this just gives you an idea of all the different memberships that a linked list can be a part of. Okay, so let's talk about the class declaration. Linked list is a generic class, just like array list was, just like the array list, so that we can declare a linked list and then inside of the, um, the uh, angle brackets, we can define some E data type. And E just is the type of the element that we wanna store in the linked list. And so examples might be linked list with a string, linked list with an employee. The important thing here is that whatever the data type that you put in the angle brackets has to be an object. It's always going to be consistent. So if it's a primitive data type, you have to use the reference type that for it to hold. And again, uh, linked list was introduced in Java 2 inside of the java.util package. With, it's, it's part of the collection framework. So all of these are gonna be part of the collection framework that we look at. So in terms of linked list constructors, there's two constructors, again, just like array list, we have linked list, we used to create an empty linked list, and then we have linked list where you can pass in a collection, and that's an abstract, that's the most abstract form of a collection. So any of these concrete classes we're learning about, you can pass in their legitimate targets to pass into this constructor. And that can be used to construct a list containing the elements of the given collection. So we can create an empty linked list 
uh, object just but for storing strings like this. So here we'll do our data type, and then we have our type parameter of the type of data that will be stored in linked list. We'll have the label or the alias of our variable, and then we'll do an assignment of an, and then just invoke the constructor. And here, actually, we can just the the more modern notation of that is just use the diamond operator when invoking the constructor because this is the part that actually is is defining what the type is. Okay, so the main features of the Java linked list class are as follows. Uh, the underlining data structure of a linked list is a doubly linked list data structure. And it's another concrete implementation of the list interface, just like array list. So typically your decision when you're gonna use a list is gonna be, do I wanna use a linked list or do I wanna use an array list? We'll talk, uh, we already kind of mentioned your considerations uh, earlier in the lecture, but we'll talk about it more on one of the latter slides. Uh, link list class allows storing duplicate elements. So that's gonna be unlike some other data structures such as sets, which do not allow for duplicate elements. Uh, no elements can be added to your link list. Uh, heterogeneous elements are allowed in the link list. So you can have elements of different types or objects of different types. Uh, the Java link list is not synchronized, so multiple threads can access the same link list object at the same time. Therefore, it is not thread safe. So since the link list is not synchronized, uh, the operation is faster. Uh, we'll talk more about multi-threaded applications and the implications of what, whether something's synchronized or not uh, later on in the semester when we get to uh, our I.O. Uh, talks. Insertion and removal of elements in the linked list is fast because the linked list, uh, there's no shifting of elements around whenever we add or remove things. Uh, the only reference is the next and previous elements that change in two of the nodes. And so that's what gives us a constant time to be able to remove and uh, add elements into it. Link list is the best choice if your frequent operations are insertions or deletions in the middle. The retrieval, getting elements in a link list is very slow because it has to traverse from the very beginning or the ending in order to reach an element that is somewhere in the middle. The link list can be used as a stack. It has pop and push methods, which make it function as a stack. We might talk a little bit about that when we get to the uh, slides or the implementation of that. Uh, and the uh, link list does not implement random access interface like array list does. So the element cannot be accessed randomly from the list. So to access the given element, we have to start from the beginning or the ending and then traverse until we get to the item or element we're looking for. And then we can iterate the link list using a list iterator, right? Because it actually implements the list interface which means we can go forwards or backwards, which is why we use a doubly linked list and not a singly linked list as the underlying data structure. So how does insertion work in a linked list? Well, in Java, at least, we can perform insertion addition operations without affecting any of the data items already stored in the list. And if we wanna take a quick uh, illustration of how that's going to look, it's gonna look like this. So let's assume that our initial linked list has the following data as shown here. So A, B, C, D is going to be the data held within the nodes. And then at the head node, the uh, previous address is null. The previous reference is null, but the next reference is going to point to this node. And then the prior index of the one that holds B will point to A, and the next will point to C. And for C, the previous is going to point to B, where the next is points to D. And for D, the previous is gonna point to C and the next is going to point to null. And so that allows me to know this is my head, this is my tail. I would start either at the head or the tail with my iterator, right, with my list iterator. Now, if I went to index in, let's say, uh, as index two, even though like we don't necessarily have a concept of indexing on here, uh, well, after insertion linked list, data will look like this. So if we want to do index two, if you want to think of this as index two, 
uh, which you know, with a with a list iterator, we do we can get the index of, and it just uses a counter to find out what the uh, index number of that node is. Then what we will do is we would go to we start at zero and then we go to the first node and then we go to the second node and to insert a node there in between these two, all we have to do is change the references out. So where where B was pointing to C as its next, now it's going to point to G. And for G, the new node is going to point to as its prior node to B. And then where C was pointing to its prior node as B, well, now C is going to point to G and G is going to point its next node to C. So effectively what we're doing is we're going to remove these two references and have them point to G and G's references are going to point to where these previously were. And that's all that has to happen, no matter where it's happening inside of the linked list to add a new element. And so that's why it's going to be constant time. So regardless of where you're at, uh, the, the amount of work is the same. You're only mutating like four references, like one of for the node behind you, one for the node in front of you, and two for the new node you're putting in. Now, if this were an array list, you'd have to move all of the elements across the array if you were to do an insert in the middle. You'd have to push them down one. Okay, so how does insertion work in linked list? Well, uh, we perform the insertion operation on the linked list. We will add an element G at index position two using the add method. So it looked like this, link list.add, and then you could add your index, the where in the list you want to go, and then whatever the data that's going to be stored there. And so when the insertion operation takes place in the link list internally, link list will create one node with G element at anywhere uh, available space in the memory and changes the next and previous pointer only without shifting any of the elements in the list like you do in array list. And so look at the updated link list in the above figure, which we looked at. So the indices, so this is the thing about the indices. Uh, ultimately, we're modeling with link lists, the structure of a list. And so lists do have a concept of indices uh, where order does matter because the idea behind indices is it's allowing you to um, actually reproduce your list and maintain a particular order for it. And that order could be how you added the elements in, but you know you can insert things uh, in a particular order as well. Like in this example, we don't wanna just add this to the beginning or end of the list. We wanna put it somewhere in the middle. But the, the point is if we're put in the middle of the list, we wanna maintain the ordering and link lists, just like array list allows us to maintain the order and therefore the concept of index uh, is, is important for linked lists, as important as it is for array lists, but under the underlying implementation, there's no concept of an index, right? Because it's just a train of uh, object references, one to the other, to the other, to the other. So the concept of an index isn't like in a true array where you go ahead and you can use the index value in a contiguous block of memory and say, I, that's where the actual value is being held at. We can think of it more as the index is being the counter. Okay, that is the uh, third element inside of my list. D did that kind of clarify? So one important thing about lists that distinguishes it from other data structures like sets and, map, uh, and maps is that ordering matters, but uniqueness does not. So we can have duplicated elements but what allows us to identify the duplicated elements is where they appear inside of the, co uh, the data collection. I, excellent. And so just for those who are watching, in case you can't see the chat, uh, the question that I had just answered are, are the indices not important in linked lists? I would, I, I would assume the indices also change and the references are more important and the indices are second and established after just to give uh, some additional insight as to the question I was answering. Okay, so how does deletion work in a linked list? Well, in the previous section, we'd already seen how linked list performs insertion operations internally. So why don't we talk about how we can also remove elements? And I think you'll have an idea based off of how insertions work, how removals work. So let's assume 
that our initial linked list has the following data, right? So this is the new one that we have. So, um, so A points to B, B points to G, G points to C, C points to D on the set of next references and on the set of previous references, D points to C, C points to G, G points to B, and B points to A. Okay, so if I say, hey, link list, remove the node at position one, well, after deletion, it's gonna look like this. Effectively, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove whatever references at index one. So essentially index two is gonna then use index zero as its prior node. And index zero is gonna use index two as its next node. And so nothing is gonna be referencing index one anymore. Nothing's gonna be referencing the node that holds B. And the moment in Java that you have a instance, some region, some object in memory where nothing is referencing it anymore, that's called a dangling reference. It's called, uh, and, and uh, it, Java comes behind you and automatically reabsorbs that memory, it reallocates that memory so that it can be reused by another part of your application. And so that, that prevents what's called a memory leak. Uh, and so just by simply removing the references between these two nodes, we've taken care of internally removing that. So it's no, no longer part of our link list. And once it's not part of our link list anymore, Java removes it from memory entirely. Yeah, and that's what's that's what the garbage collection does. Okay. So effectively, we just explained that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the methods inside of linked list. In addition to implementing the list interface, Java linked list class also provides methods for retrieving, inserting, and removing elements from both ends of the list. Linked list methods are listed in the below tables. So we have the ability to add, which is you where you can pass any object into the link list, and then it will return back a Boolean value, true or false, on whether it's successfully added. Then we can also have a, a second add method, right? Because it's overloaded, where it could take in two parameters. If you, if you do the add here, it will, end, it will add it to the end of the list automatically. If you do it, add with the index, then it'll go to that position within the list, and then it will go ahead and put that new node there. And that's where we saw it updates the references between the prior node and the next node that would normally be chained together inside of the linked list. We can also do the add all where we can pass the collection. Now, I mean, it shouldn't be, this should, all these methods should be very apparent. They should be the same set of merit uh, of methods that we have in array list because the methods that we're required to implement are based off of the interfaces that we implement off of. So just to be a member of collection, just to be a member of list, uh, uh, we have to implement these methods. Now remember, linked list also implements uh, DEC and uh, Q as well. So we're gonna see some other methods that we'll go ahead and implement based off of having membership to those interfaces. But this is the nice thing about interfaces is that it allows us to really design out our concrete classes by picking and choosing for what methods we have to uh, have membership of, and then we know consistently how those uh, those methods will work. So add all takes in a collection, and we'll add all those things into our linked list from some other collection. Add all is also overloaded, so we can put an index of where we want those collections to go. By default, normally we go at the end, but we can put where in the linked list we want them to go. Uh, we can clear the entire list, which will set the size to zero and remove essentially all the nodes. And we have the ability to check to see if there's a particular object contained within our linked list, and that's going to return back a Boolean value, true or false, whether the object is in there or not. Uh, we can check the size of our list, and the size will reference how many elements are in there. A empty list will start with a size zero, and that will either grow or shrink as you add and remove elements. We can convert our list into an array, which will be uh, whatever data type that, is the, that you cast this as, that the type parameter was. Well, this will, by default, uh, 
define it as an object uh, array. Here, we have the ability to clone our array list into another uh, array list. We have the ability to remove an object and it's gonna return true or false, a Boolean value, whether it's successful or not. We can also remove by index. So if we pass in a reference to a, a value, we'll search to see if that reference is inside the list and remove it, or we can pass the position number in our linked list and remove it that way. And then for element that's used to retrieve the first element of the linked list. And with the first element, you can then traverse the linked list because the first element is a node. And so the node has a pr previous and a next node. So given the first element, you can then go to the second and the third and the fourth, all the way to the, the last, to the tail of the list. We have the ability to be able to get an element off of an index. So we give it the position number and it'll get us that uh, value. We could also set a, uh, a data in a particular node. So we give it an index and a new element, it will go ahead and change out the data field for that node. We can get the index of a particular object. So if we pass in an object, it'll look at the data field and all the nodes and then give the position number of it. Uh, we can get the last index of it, of the object as well. So this will return the first occurrence of that object. Whereas last index will uh, give you the last occurrence of that object inside of your linked list in case there's duplicates. Uh, we can, of course, get an iterator or also a list iterator. An iterator because it's uh, a collection and a list iterator because it is a uh, it, it also implements a list. So this allows us to be able to go forwards and backwards and actually mutate the state of our list too using the iterator. So link list deck methods, the link list class has various specific methods that are inherited from the deck interface. Let's take a look at some of those. Here we have the ability to add first and then pass in an object. And this is used to uh, add the specific element into the head of the linked list, into the first position of the linked list. We have add last, which when we pass in an object will allow us to add it to the end of the list. We also have getter methods where we can get the first element of the linked list, or we can get the last element of the, uh, the linked list. We have the ability to also remove the first and last element. And that when we remove that, it'll actually not only remove the element from the linked list, so it's not in the list anymore, but it'll also return that element so that you can store it inside of a, uh, uh, a variable if you want to. And so typically this is also what's called popping or um, uh, off of, uh, if it's a stack, it's, it's popping or dequeuing if it's on a queue. And then uh, offer first and offer last, that's used to insert the specified element at the front or the, uh, or, or the end of the list. And again, that'll return a Boolean value on whether it's successful or not, whereas add first and add last will not. And then we have the ability to peak first and peak last. This is used to retrieve the first and last element from the linked list, and it will return null if the list is empty. So it returns a value. Uh, you have the ability to pull that retrieves and removes the first element from the linked list. You have pull first, which is going to retrieve and remove the first element from the linked list and returns null if the list is empty. You have pull last, which retrieves and removes the last element from the linked list and returns null if the list is empty. Uh, pop will remove the uh, last element from the list and return that. Push will be used to push something at the or add something to the end of the list. And peak first is used to retrieve the first element from the linked list and we return null if it's empty. So you have peaks, you have pulls, you have pops, you have pushes. These, if you're not familiar, are all the methods that typically are defined for queues and stacks. And so queues and stacks work on a linear data structure and what defines them and separates them 
is uh, their behavior of how things get inserted and removed into those linear data structures. So like for instance, with a stack, you could think of that as like a stack of pancakes, for instance. So the first pancake is put on the bottom and then the second is put on top and the third is put on top. Or like for a deck of cards also works like this. So if you, you, you put the first card down and the second card on top and the third card on top of that and the fourth card on top of that. And then when you go to draw a card, you actually draw from the top. So the last card that goes onto your deck of cards is gonna be the first card that pulls off. That's called LIFO. The last one in is the first one out. And so in your typical grocery store line or queue as they, they call it uh, on the other side of the pond, um, it, it's a uh, first in first out. So the first person in the line will be the first one out of the line. So as the line stacks up, it goes in the order of who got in the line first. And so the typical methods that define those behaviors are all available on linked list. So you can use a linked list as either a stack or a queue. Okay, so when is the best case to use a linked list in a Java application? Well, linked list is the best choice to use when your frequent operation, when what you end up doing a lot with this particular collection is either adding or removing elements in the middle of the list because adding and removing elements in a linked list is faster compared to array list. That's what this data structure really uh, excels at. So to take like a kind of a real world example to better understand this concept, suppose that there are hundred elements in the array list. And if we remove the 50th from the array list, the 51st element will go to the 50th and the 52nd goes to the 51st. And that just, you know, it cascades down all the way through. So that because of that manipulation, array lists are slow for that type of work. So in the case of linked lists, if we remove the 50th element, there's no shifting of elements that takes place. We only change the references, the next and previous nodes of the 49th and the 51st element, and we're done. And it doesn't matter how big the array list is. It could be a million element, I mean, the linked list is, it could be a million elements and it's the same amount of work. Moreover, a linked list can be used when we need a stack. So if we need that LIFO, last in, first out, or Q, if we need first in, first out data structure. Okay, so when is the worst case to use a linked list in our Java app? So Java linked list is the worst choice to use when you have frequent operations of retrieving or getting elements from the linked list. So if you're if you have an array, if you have a collection and you're constantly reading data from it, not necessarily having to write data randomly in it, but if you're constantly having to pull random data from it and 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 by random, I mean anywhere in the collection. So if you're just pulling data from the head of the collection or the tail of the collection, that would be quick. But if you're talking about random retrieval, random access, then linked list is really slow for that because you might potentially, because you can only start the head or the tail, and then you got to work your way through and actually iterate across. So if you have a million element array, you might have to do a million lookups to find an element. Whereas with an array list, you can just, give that index number and uh, and actually access, even if you know what index it is, right? Even if you know what index it is, in order to access that, you still have to traverse the reference train because it's not like an array. That's the point of random access interface. If I give an index number, I can go directly to that memory address and look it up. And it doesn't take any lookup times in between. But even if I have an index number, that's just the position number so we have to actually iterate through that many succinct, uh, 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 sequential calls. So we'll go to the first array and say, hey, give me your next array. Uh, I mean, your next node, give me the next node, give me the next node. And if you're trying to get node like 10,000, you have to go across all the other prior like 9,999 nodes. So you find the memory address of where that node is in memory. So you can see that's, I mean, since link, uh, link list does not implement the random access interface, you can't just access those randomly. As I said, so you have to traverse from the beginning to the end. So that could take a long time. I think, yeah, and pretty much this is all just a re-explanation of everything that I had just said. And so, uh, so if, if you find yourself in a situation where you're not writing in random locations very often of your array, but you're doing a lot of lookups, use array lists. If you find that you're doing a lot of writes or deletes randomly across your array, 
uh, then it's better to use a linked list. Excellent. Okay, so let me, so we're done now with that particular slide deck. I'm going to move on 